Hello, everyone. On this episode of Common Thread, cartoon-based games. Developed by Imagineering and released for the Nintendo in 1991, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is a pseudo-side-scroller based on Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the animated series. You play as Chad Finletter, a boy who is sent to thwart the sinister plans of Dr. Putra T. Gangrene, an evil scientist bent on the destruction of the city of San Zucchini. You must use your wits and incredible jumping skills to squash minions and pull the plug on the Doomsday Tomato Rocket. Gameplay is pretty basic, with only one primary skill to command, jumping. Most combat consists of avoiding plant-based goons while using jump and squish tactics to defeat enemies. Fights are on rails, leaving the real skill in mastering the baked-in awfulness. The hitbox on enemies are tiny, while the hitbox on Chad is pretty much any of his pixels. Controls are heavy and awkward. Boss fights introduce varying attacks for Chad to use, but timing and control are horribly bad. While stages are scrolling, choices can be made by entering doorways or following paths that go up and down. Graphics are mediocre. From the color palette to the scene backgrounds, textures are bland and sprites are pixelated with few frames. Like the graphics, sounds are also mediocre. While the audio sampling is good, the number of effects are few and far between. Stage music is basic chiptunes that, after a while, becomes slightly irritating. From the empty feeling stages to the hard to control protagonist, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is a bland, uninspired attempt to capitalize off a mildly successful franchise. The best part of the game is the opening dialogue, which clearly received the lion's share of attention in an attempt to inspire nostalgia. Gameplay is so awful that winning the game is practically impossible. Good luck trying. We give this game a 4 out of 10. Developed by Apache Software and released for the Sega Genesis in 1995, Marsupilami is a side-scrolling puzzle game based on the Disney animated cartoon character of the same name. You play as Marsupilami, a clever and talented marsupial who is best friends with Bonelli the elephant. While playing in the jungle, you are both captured by the notorious hunter, bring them back alive, and sent to work in a traveling circus. After months of grueling performances and terrible food, Marsupilami has grown tired of captivity and wishes to return to his wife and three kids in the jungle. Using his multifunctional tail, he decides to bust himself and Benelli free of the circus and find home. Gameplay begins right after Marsupilami uses his tail to get the cage key and free himself. Your tail is the cornerstone of strategy and its various abilities are used to overcome challenges. Using the tail is a bit complicated, first having to find the upgrades, then using the correct action to help Bonelli move along and over obstacles using stairs, tail whips, dropped fruit, and other options. The real challenge is keeping Bonelli on track, as he is rather clueless and tends to aimlessly move back and forth. Timing is razor thin, and keeping Benelli moving in the right direction is almost impossible, even on easy game mode. Graphics are on the low end for a Genesis title with a basic color palette and low detail sprite animations. However, later stages add much better background parallax scrolling. Sounds are equally squalid, with poor sampling and harsh clips. Stage music is decent quality, sometimes bordering on good. Marsupilami is a hot mess of a game. While the concept is fairly original, the execution is cheap and badly balanced. This is a shame. Puzzle games are less common on the Sega Genesis, especially titles for young children. For giving the garbage graphics and sound, more effort should have been placed on balanced gameplay, as the puzzle timing requires dexterity that even the most seasoned game player would find annoying. We give this title a 4 out of 10. Based on the animated series of the same name, Biker Mice from Mars is a racing game developed by Konami and released for the Super Nintendo in 1994. As anthropomorphic mice from Mars, it's your job to defeat the evil Plutarchians and their henchmen in order to save the planets of the solar system. 
This battle takes the form of a series of races across multiple planets and tracks. Skill and cunning is needed, as well as the services of Charlene Charlie Davidson, a top-notch mechanic from Earth who sells various upgrades for your bikes. Gameplay consists of choosing one of six competitors, Throttle, Moto, Vinny, Lawrence Limburger, Dr. Carbuncle, and Grease Pit, then deciding on one of three types of races, Main Race, Battle Race, and Practice. Practice is just what the name says, where you take the player alone around a track of your choosing to learn the pattern. Main Race is the full competition, where you race against opponents in an attempt to gain track points in cash. Each player has a specific list of strengths and weaknesses, from the standard traction and acceleration to the less common, such as wheels or no wheels. Combat is based not only on how well you handle the bike around the track, but also how well you attack other players, with each player having a unique weapon. AI players are unforgiving, so use every move you have. The game engine uses seamless, smooth, and jitter-free isometric projection. The bright and full color palette is pleasing to the eye and sprites are well animated. Sounds are well sampled and pleasing to the ear. Stage music is the best flipping MIDI style music we have ever heard on a Super Nintendo with a heavy rock and roll feel. Our only complaint is the limited number of music tracks as just a handful more would have made for a better experience. Biker Mice from Mars is an unexpected title that combines the fun aspects of progression-based racing with real-time combat. Gameplay is mostly well-balanced and a joy to experience. Though there is much to praise about this title, some aspects fell a little short. Race tracks need to be a bit longer, and combat is more luck than skill. With just a bit more polishing, Biker Mice from Mars could have been a top-rated title. We give this game an 8 out of 10. Released for the Nintendo in 1992, Felix the Cat is a side-scrolling action game based on the long-running popular cartoon character of the same name. You play as Felix the Cat, a cunning feline with a magic briefcase. The Mad Professor has kidnapped Kitty, your girlfriend, and demands that you give him your briefcase in exchange. As Felix, you are too crafty to fall for his plan. You grab your magic briefcase and head out to do battle for Kitty. Gameplay consists of nine groups of stages, each with several substages. Felix's attacks are based on what stage you are on and what level of power-up Felix is at. Attacks range from punching gloves to airplanes to turtles that blow bubbles. Each unique attack has advantages and disadvantages. For example, the initial punch glove is easy to control but requires close proximity to hit opponents. Higher level attacks, such as the tank, have powerful blasts but are more difficult to land a hit. When you are hit, you lose a level of attack. If you are hit when at base level, or if you fall off the stage, you die. Extra lives are added each time a level up heart is found when you are at max attack level. Many bosses are found at the end of each group of stages. Each boss is unique and requires a different strategy to defeat. Graphics are smooth and have great detail. The color palette is deep enough for good visuals, and sprites are well animated. Backgrounds scroll smoothly and have decent complexity. Sounds are spot on, with little to no obvious flaws. Stage music is the standard chiptune style and at times a bit repetitive, yet it is upbeat and overall adds to the experience. Felix the Cat is one of the better games based on an animated series. Gameplay is fun and fast paced with enough variety to keep a player interested. Our only complaint is the sense of deja vu one gets when playing for a while. It seems awfully similar to other very popular NES franchises. From the similar look of stage designs, to the rescue girlfriend plot device, to the action of gameplay, Felix sometimes feels like a clone. 
one can't help but wonder if they are playing some alternate reality mix-up. Even so, Felix the Cat stands out as one of the better game titles. We give it an 8 out of 10. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next video where the ladies get in for free. That was first read, believe it or not. Let's move on to the second. Gameplay begins right after Marsupilami uses his tail to get the cage key. Reset.